Before we get started, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. Also, if you are interested in courses or books, or you have ideas on how to improve these content, please check out the link in the description box. Here we will take a look at interpreting regression outputs in Stata. So we are going to load a dataset that comes with the Stata installation. So this is NLSW88. And then let's take a look at the uh, description of the data. So this is NLSW1988 extract and these are our variables and these are the variable labels. So I'm just going to run a simple regression and we are going to interpret the output of this regression. So let's get started. So first here we have the coefficients. This gives us the uh, coefficient estimates of all of these covariates. And so the way we interpret is this basically uh, for one unit change in this covariate, it causes this much unit of change in the dependent variable. Um, so either we are interpreting this change is as an association or causation depends on our theory and our arguments. And then here we have the standard errors. So this gives us the uh, sample standard deviation of our estimated coefficients. So this is the standard error of, uh, of our estimated coefficient of race. This is the standard error of our estimated coefficient of age and so on and so forth. So then we come to the t-statistics. The t-values test the hypothesis that the coefficient is different from zero. So the null hypothesis is that this estimated coefficient is equal to zero and the alternative is it is not equal to zero. And the t-statistic corresponding to that, that t-test is uh, given in this column. And so the rule of thumb is uh, if we are uh, we have 95% confidence or, uh, or a 5% significance level, then we need the t value greater than 1.96 to reject the null hypothesis. So in this case, we can see that all of our t values are greater than 1.96, which means we can reject the null hypothesis that these estimated coefficients are zero, which means our coefficients are non-zero, which is good. Now we can also get the t values by dividing the coefficient by its standard error. So let's uh, let's try it out. So if I copy this coefficient, let's display this one divided by the standard error, then that should give us the t statistic, which is minus 4.17. So here we can see it matches with the t statistic here. All right, and then we have this column, probability greater than the absolute value of t, which case, which is basically the two tailed p values that the test uh, of the test that the null hypothesis where each coefficient is different from zero. So this is basically the, uh, the, the p-values corresponding to the same uh, these t statistics, which gives us the p-values that the null hypothesis that uh, the coefficient estimate is zero, and the alternative is that they are not zero. And in all of these cases, at 5% significance level, we can reject the null hypothesis. All right, and then here we have the 95% confidence interval, which gives us a lower bound and the upper bound, given uh, that the mean of these in this interval is this coefficient estimate. Let's move uh, to this portion here. So here we have the number of observations. So for each variables, we have 2,246 observations here. Now, uh, this is the F statistic corresponding to the F test that each of these estimated coefficients is equals to zero. So the null is uh, beta one equals to beta two equals to beta three equals to beta four equals to beta five is equals to zero. And the alternative is uh, all of them are not equals to zero. And this is the P value corresponding to the same F test. So this is the p-value of the model. It tests whether the r-square is different from zero. So this is uh, so at first I told that uh, it tests whether all of the estimated coefficients are zero. So another way of saying it is it tests whether the r-square is equal to zero. And here it is statistically significant and we can reject this null hypothesis and we can see that our regression is not spurious. All right, and uh, another important thing we should notice is that the F test is, is applicable when the model is linear. If we have a non-linear model, uh, we should look at other kinds of tests instead of the F test. All right, um, the R squared. So R squared basically tells us uh, what fraction of the variance in the dependent variable is explained by the covariates here. So it says that around 13.94% or 14% of the variance of wage is being explained by all of these uh, covariates. So we calculate r square by 1 minus sum of square of the re uh, residuals divided by total sum of squares. So here we have sum of squares of the residuals and the total sum of squares. And then we have the adjusted r square, which basically ad uh, shows the r square adjusted by the number of cases and the number of variables. So in this case, our number of cases is 2246 and our number of variables here is 5 and including the intercept is 6. 
So the formula is this uh, 1 minus 1 minus r square into n minus 1 divided by n minus k. So here n is the number of observations and k is the number of covariates including the constant. So if we are calculating k excluding the constant in that case we would have to do another negative one here. So here let's try it out. Let's calculate the adjusted r square 13.7479 and we can see it matches the adjusted r square here. The root MSC here, this is the standard deviation of the regression. The closer it is to zero, the better is the fit of the model. And this brings us to the final portion of the regression output, which is this one, the sum of squares. So the MSS is, gives, uh, is the model sum of squares, which is the predicted values y hat minus y bar, the average values of the dependent variable, averaged over the number of observations. Um, and the residual sum of squares give us the y minus y hat, which is the estimated residuals squared and then taken the average. k equals to number of variables including constant, n equals to number of observations. So the formula for total sum of squares is MSS plus RSS, which is uh, also another way of saying y minus y bar squared averaged over n observations. So we can also calculate the F statistics using the MSS and RSS using this formula. We can calculate the R statistic uh, R squared using this formula. And we have already taken a look at the adjusted R square and the root MSC is the square root of the RSS divided by N minus K. And finally, uh, we can also use the robust standard errors. So using the robust option gives us the robust standard errors. So these are basically heteroscedasticity robust standard errors. In this case, notice that we don't get the output of the MSS RSS here. So this is how we can uh, interpret the basic outputs of a regression in Stata. If you like my videos and find them helpful, then please support my work by subscribing to the channel.